p.m. It's November 18th, 2020, and the meeting of the Urban Design Commission will now come to order. May we have a roll call? Nicole Rehm. Here. Monica Sullivan. Monica Sullivan. Jerry Winchester. Here. Melissa Morris. Melissa Morris. Barbara Cash. Here. Edith McKee. Here. Art Clark. Here. Carla Baxley is excused. And we do have Melissa and Monica on our teams portion. We'll try to get them on the bridge line. Thank you. Melissa and Monica, can you please call the bridge line? So I can hear everybody can else hear everybody really else. well, but I cannot hear you very well, the chair or, or Lori. Is this, it's easy. So just letting you know. Isn't that Melissa and uh, bear with us one minute. Who said that they could not hear me? I've turned my speakers up a little bit. I finally can hear you a little bit better. So I think, I think we're okay. Okay. Was that Jerry? Yes. I think we're good now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do we need to verify that Monica and Melissa are indeed online? Okay, somebody just unmuted themselves again. Should I text them? <laughs> Please hold for just a couple of seconds. We're still having technical difficulties. They're on teams. What's the bridge line number again? I'm sorry. There are people still on the teams. This I know. Is Jerry. Okay. Three four three six zero six seven. Edith, am I still muffled? I wonder if Edith, can you hear me? Hello? Is this Monica? Yes, this is Monica. There you are. Perfect. Melissa? Melissa, if you could please call the bridge. She can't hear me, can she? Not if she's not on the bridge. And we're muted? Okay. Did someone just call in? This is Melissa. Hi. Excellent. So 
I think we have verification that Melissa Morse she and needs Monica. to mute Teams. My and Teams is muted. And Monica Sullivan are in attendance. That concludes roll call. <laughs> Let's move on to minutes. Uh, may we have a motion to approve the minutes from October 14th? So moved. We have a motion. I move to approve. This is Barbara. Was that a second? Seconded. Thank you. Are there any objections or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Moving on to special order of business. Are there any disclosures this evening? Doesn't appear that there are any disclosures. Before I proceed, I would like to ask uh, the secretary one question. Do they still need to type their motions or can they speak them now that we're on the bridge line? Okay. Should they type then? So if we are going to, if you're going to make a motion, please just type um, motion or second. That way we can keep track of it um, on the meeting chat for the evening. Um, but you can also state um, that you move, yeah, on the phone. Okay. Is someone not Is someone not muted or are they just making a lot of no noise on the bridge line? Okay, Barbara, you just joined us again. Did you lose connection? I took myself off Teams to avoid any um, any issues with the technical stuff, but then I realized I couldn't type in my motion. So I, I rejoined, and I hope I can figure this out. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Barbara. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. So I am going to move on here to, I think, the next thing on our agenda is the public hearings. Um, so I will read the procedure by which the public may speak to the Urban Design Commission at its meeting. Okay. The procedure by which the public may speak to the Urban Design Commission at its meeting is, one, after the staff presentation is completed on public hearing items, the chair will ask for public testimony on the issue. Two, persons who wish to testify will follow the time limits established in the Urban Design Commission rules of procedure. 2A, petitioners, including all of his or her representatives, are given 10 minutes. The rebuttal by the petitioner may be allowed when time has been reserved. 2B, representatives of groups, community councils, PTAs, etc., are given five minutes. And 2C, individuals, they are given three minutes. Item three, when your testimony is complete, you may be asked questions by the commission. You may only testify once on any issue unless questioned by the commission. Uh, item four, an individual may have appeal rights relating to any action the Urban Design Commission takes except commission recommendations to the assembly which are not appealable. Appeals must be filed with the clerk's office within 20 days after approval by the Urban Design Commission of the resolution which is the commission's final decision. A fee for the appeal is required at the time of filing. We have case 2020-0132, petitioner Jack M. Pomerantz is before us with a request for a design variance to allow existing landscaping to remain and to allow uh, required parking spaces to be located within a yard setback. May we have staff's presentation? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. 
The petitioner is requesting a variance from Anchorage Municipal Code, Title 21, Chapter 7, Subsection 080E2, Parking Lot Landscaping Requirements, to allow the existing landscaping and drainage facilities along West 19th Avenue to remain instead of L1 Visual Enhancement Landscaping. And they're also uh, applying for a variance from Title 21, Chapter 5, Subsection 040A3D, parking and setbacks to allow off-street parking spaces and loading areas to be placed within required setbacks. These variances are being requested due to current site constraints and the desire to redevelop the site into an adult care facility. Uh, just uh, one thing to note is the original application request did include a parking reduction. However, this part of the request has been deemed unnecessary should this variance be approved. If this variance is not approved, then the applicant can work with the Municipal Traffic Engineering Department and Planning Department to apply for possible parking reductions. And uh, no action on the parking reduction request is necessary from the Commission at this time. Uh, the Planning Department has evaluated the application and presents the following findings and recommendation for the Commission's consideration. Uh, for Standard A, we do believe the standard is partially met. The applicant is requesting approval for a variance to allow the existing landscaping, uh, which does meet the standard for site enhancement landscaping, and a drainage ditch to remain along West 19th Avenue instead of installing L1 visual enhancement landscaping and to allow required off-street parking to be located within a required setback per the subject standard. This will result in landscaping and a parking lot layout which does not achieve the visual design standard per code, but it will result in benefits which address issues beyond site aesthetics. The existing drainage improvements were installed to prevent stormwater and ice dams from impacting traffic flow along West 19th Avenue. Allowing these improvements to remain as is will reduce necessary site disturbance and will retain the current, uh, current parking lot configuration, which is compliant with vehicular circulation requirements. This variance has become necessary to retain adequate area to accommodate all the required off-street parking and vehicular circulation. Without this variance, the applicant would have to redesign their parking lot layout to accommodate the drainage ditch, the L1 visual enhancement landscaping, uh, and this reduction in overall parking size could negatively affect the applicant's ability to develop all required off-street parking uh, necessary for the intended use of the adult care facility due to the lot's rectangular geometry, uh, which is a longer width than depth in this case. For standard B, uh, we do believe the standard is met. This project is compliant with the following policy of the Anchorage 2020 Comprehensive Plan, and that'd be policy 5. It's also compliant uh, with land use policy 2.3 of the Anchorage 2040 land use plan. And for standard C, we do believe the standard is met. Uh, the proposed design alternative will benefit the community by preserving the existing drainage patterns along West 19th Avenue and also minimizing the amount of necessary site disturbance on property. All required landscaping will be installed along other applicable property lines and all required off-street parking will be provided on property. The site was formerly home to a child care facility which had similar operational characteristics to the proposed adult care facility. Because of this, any impacts to this site on neighboring properties is familiar and well known. For standard D, we do believe this standard is met. The granting of this variance will not adversely affect the use of adjacent property, allowing the existing landscaping and drainage facilities to remain as is along West 19th Avenue. Uh, will not prevent or impede adjacent property owners from making full lawful use of their property. The current course for stormwater and snowmelt drainage will be retained and there will be no adverse impacts to any public facilities or municipal rights of way. For standard E, we do believe the standard is met. This variance will not change the character of the R2M district where this project is located, nor will it permit a use not otherwise permitted in the district. The applicant intends to develop the site into an adult care facility serving nine or more persons, which requires the approval of a conditional use permit within the R2M district. The corresponding conditional use permit will require approval from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, for standard F, we do believe this standard is met. Uh, the granting of this variance will not restrict or impede ADA accessibility or reasonable accommodation. Compliant ADA access will be provided as part of the development of the planned adult care facility. And for standard G, we do believe the standard is met. The granting of this variance will not adversely affect the health, safety, or welfare of the people of the, of the municipality. 
This variance is being requested due to site constraints on property caused by unique lot geometry combined with the placement of the existing building which impacts the petitioner's ability to fully locate all required parking and loading areas outside of any required setback. Additionally, allowing the existing landscaping and drainage facilities to remain will preserve the current drainage, drainage facilities along West 19th Avenue. Altering the existing drainage patterns may result in a negative impact to surrounding properties from impeded stormwater runoff and ice dams during the winter months. And for standard H, uh, we do believe the standard is met uh, simply by default because the variance uh, request does not involve a sign. Uh, and Anchorage Municipal Code does require that the variance request substantially meet all eight of the design variance standards in order for a variance to be granted. The department finds that standard A is partially met and all other standards are substantially met. Therefore, the department recommends approval of the variance subject to conditions one and two on page nine of the staff report. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to take any questions that the commission may have. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Oh, yes, I do have. Commissioner Sullivan. Um, my question is, seems like they're expanding uh, for also for the adult care services. And I'm just looking at the requirements for parking. Uh, the drawing is saying that they have 8,000 square foot for adult care facility. Uh, that will generate about 20 thousand. So like what's the parking for the child care? I mean, how are we making the counts of the total occupancy and how much parking they need? Uh, Madam Chair, I will have to look that up real quick. Uh, just give me 30 seconds. Through the chair, the parking requirement for adult care facility for nine plus uh, nine or more persons is one per 400 square feet of gross floor area and one passenger loading space reserved for pickup and delivery of adults per 2,000 square feet of gross floor area. And then for a comparable child care center, uh, if it's between nine and 15 children, it's one space in addition to what is required for the dwelling. Um, and that would be the assumption that the child care center was in somebody's home. And if it's a child care center of more, uh, with more than 15 children, it's one per 400 square feet of gross floor area and one passenger loading space reserved for pickup and delivery of children per 800 square feet of gross floor area. So, thank you. So do you think that you have the requirement, the required number of parking Cases. I mean, the only number that we have is that it's 8,000 uh, for adult care, which that would generate 20 parking stalls, and then whatever is needed, uh, plus the loading, and then whatever is for child care needed. So I'm not sure because I'm not, I don't have the square footage of the occupancy. Uh, through the chair, I believe that the applicant could probably dive into a little more detail as to exactly square footages of the building um, and the parking requirements that's necessary. Um, some of that is going to be uh, evaluated in more detail through the conditional use permit process, uh, but perhaps the applicant uh, during their presentation can uh, provide a little more detail on that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will just add whether uh, it makes any difference at all that on page 33 of the staff packet, uh, Kristen Langley, the traffic safety section supervisor, did say the site is proposed changing the current use of child care to adult daycare. The parking requirements remain the same. I'm not sure if that holds weight. 
but just FYI. Are there any other questions of staff? Hearing and seeing none, do we have a petitioner on the bridge phone? If, if you are there. Yes. Hi. If you could please uh, just state your name and spell your full name for the record. Sure. Craig Bennett and C-R-A-I-G and Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T -T, with S4 Group. Thank you. And would you, you have 10 minutes. Would you like to reserve any of that for rebuttal? Um, due to no need to reserve. No need to reserve. Okay. You may proceed. Okay. Chair, members of the board, thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, I'm the petitioner's representative, and staff did a really good job explaining the need for the two variances here. Um, I'll speak to the parking in a minute, and the only thing I really have to add is about 10 years ago, we applied and got approved for a child care CUP here, and going through that child care CUP process, we designed the parking, got the parking approved how it is now, and we were required to put in a ditch and drainage facilities along um, 19th Avenue and now changing it to adult care and the child care was under old code and now we're dealing with new code has a couple different um, regulations and that's why we're needing these two variances because of previous approvals um, and for that parking so we we're changing from child care to adult care and the re parking requirement is 20 parking stalls with, and then also four drop-off stalls. So basically 24 parking is what's needed. And a majority of those parking is in the front yard setback, which is why we need this um, parking variance. And I'll open up to any questions that the board has. Thank you. Are there any questions for the petitioner? Commissioner Sullivan. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, thank you for clarifying. I thought it was going to keep the daycare also, but that makes sense. Uh, now I understand how the parking works. Thank you. So my, my, next, my next question is, um, seems like the the area where there's going to be the loading and uh, the, the the loading of the passengers and accessible uh, parking stall are perpendicular to the building. Uh, currently, you have curbs, like uh, parking curbs. I'm assuming that that ones are going to get removed. And then also, uh, my concern is that the asphalt is in this repair. And, and I'm just wondering if you guys have checked for accessibility that people can actually roll through the area without having problems. There's some cracks in the asphalt. Yes. Yeah, so for the first part, for the um, dropping off parking and um, perpendicular to, you're talking about the 20-foot alley, I'm assuming. I'm sorry, the parallel. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the parallel parking to the building where it says there's an accessible. Correct. So those, so those Go parking ahead, shown in red there that are parallel to the building is what traffic the traffic department's going to require for the drop-off. They want four in a line um, there parallel to the building. And that will be going through the conditional use per, um, process, um, how those stalls get painted, and um, most likely the, we will be required to put bollards between the parking stall and the building for a five-foot alley or aisleway. Um, and so there probably won't be a curb between it, but there will be bollards. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. 
Are there any other questions for the petitioner? Seeing and hearing none, we will now open the hearing to public testimony. Is there anyone wishing to testify? No, Madam Chair, there is not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bennett, would you like to continue? Do you have anything more you'd like to add? You do have eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd just like to say that um, I did talk to four community members that called in and asked about this project, and they all were strongly in favor of adult care. Um, I didn't have anyone talk to me that was not in favor of it, and I have been dealing with traffic and private development down at the city and um, multiple meetings about this, and they were also in favor of the, these variances. Private development um, definitely wants that drainage there on 19th that they required 10 years ago. They still want that drainage there. And traffic, um, like on page 33 of the packet, traffic was recommending approval um, because they required these parking stalls laid out, you know, 10 years ago, and they say, you know, this is what they prefer versus trying to do some type of parking reduction. Um, so I just wanted to say all the departments are in favor of it, and so far all the community I've talked to has been in favor of it. And that's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. If there are no other um, questions for staff or the petitioner, seeing and, and, and hearing none, we will close the public hearing. May we have a motion? Please type motion if you would like to make a motion. We have a motion from Commissioner Morse, and we'll consider Commissioner Winchester be a second. Thank you, Commissioner Winchester. I see that you've made a second. Okay, uh, Commissioner Morse, would you please state your motion? I would. I'm just looking for the number. I would like to move to approve case number 2020-0130. It is a variant from the parking lot landscape requirements in the Municipal Code 21.07-080E.2. Uh, additionally, you. there's a second variant for the visual enhancement landscaping. We also vote to approve, uh, and that is code reference 21.05.040A3. D is in dog. And you subject to department's recommendations? Correct. Subject to department recommendation one and two. Thank you. Do you want me to speak them? No. Uh, I don't believe so. That's fine. We have them here documented. Okay. Um, well, so we do have a second. Would you care to speak in, to your motion and, and state some findings, Commissioner Morse? Yes, I'm ready to speak to the motion. I would note that first we should thank the petitioner for uh, dealing with the technical difficulties that come with these online meetings. We're in an unprecedented time, and we appreciate your patience. Uh, I will note that the requirements of this variance were to meet all approval criteria of 2103.240G, and I found that all standards were met. The project is a, a great reuse in the center of the city, and this is the point of the Urban Design Commission, is to find a way to allow the city to continue and grow and refill these empty spaces. So I find it as a, a well-rounded project for the municipality. Thank you, Commissioner Morse. 
Commissioner Winchester, would you care to speak to your second? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I would. Um, I would like to state that um, I will be supporting the motion, of course. Um, I do find that um, these irregular lots um, that uh, we have, of course, uh, find ourselves with and uh, the concerns uh, with trying to accommodate um, all the various code uh, requirements uh, is the reason we have this variance process and it should be uh, reasonable. And I think that this is a reasonable interpretation. Uh, I think staff did a great job in uh, stating that all of the uh, approval criteria standards were met and uh, they're very well illustrated. The one that was partially met, I find um, interesting that it dealt with um, only the uh, stormwater and ice damming and, and, uh, and the drainage issues, which really are a significant uh, piece of our, uh, of our landscaping and, and land needs in Anchorage, and that um, making sure we maintain that stormwater and ice uh, requirements uh, on West 19th was a big, and the drainage ditches uh, is what put some of these uh, criteria into a partially set, set standard. But uh, I do believe that the uh, petitioner has met uh, the intent uh, fully uh, of the ordinances, and uh, and so I will be supporting the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Winchester. Does anyone else wish to add findings or speak? regarding the motion. Seeing and hearing none, the motion on the floor is to approve a request for design variance to allow existing landscaping to remain and to allow required parking spaces to be located within a yard setback. May we have a vote? Mr. Clark. Yes. Ms. Cash? Yes. Ms. McKee? Ms. McKee? Yes. Mr. Winchester? Yes. Ms. Morse? Yes. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. And Chair Ream? Yes. Thank you. That motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Bennett and Mr. Pomerantz for your presentation this evening. Um, we do appreciate the work you're, you've done. Okay, well, I think we're moving on to the rest of our agenda. And it would appear that we do not have anything officially on the agenda. Does the secretary have anything? No, Madam Chair, thank you. Anything from the commission? <laughs> I, I do see a comment here. Um, so let's moving on. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Oh, Commissioner Winchester has provided a motion to adjourn. <laughs> May we have a second on that? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. That adjourns the meeting. Good night.